I'm really excited to welcome back somebody who I see all the time, but you only see every once in a while if you listen to this podcast. His name is William, and he's the moderator of my Discord server where I have my whole community, and he's a big part of that community. And his pers- really valuable to me as a learner, as a person who's in the community, and especially as somebody who's really into AI stuff. So we get to ask him questions all the time in our community, and we used to go live to teach people about AI when it was still a really big, scary new thing. And we thought we'd just catch up after a while and say, what's new in AI? What, if you're not, if you're still not using it to its potential, what could you possibly be doing? So we start with a few terms that you may or may not know, and then give you three things that you can do. Number one, it's how to do corrections for voicing and stress. Number two, it's how you can generate really short texts using AI that are super simple and effective. And then number three, we start talking about a lot of other tips that might actually be really helpful to you. So I hope you walk away with a lot of golden nuggets today from me and William talking about how to use AI to reinforce your pronunciation. I'm Bianca, your personal American accent coach, and I'm here to help you master an American accent in English because your voice is your choice when it comes to how you sound. I try to release a podcast episode every two weeks. And so you should really subscribe to whatever podcast platform you use so that you don't miss the newest episode. And by the way, if you want to see the full video of the episode, it's available at Accent Coach Bianca on YouTube. Now, let's get on with the show. Welcome. We're back again. It's been a while. Uh, And we, we used to talk all the time. Actually, we do talk all the time, like three times a week usually, because I want to tell people in case they don't know, you are the moderator of my Discord, of our Discord, I should say. And so I know you very well. If people have been listening to the podcast before, they probably know you. We've done a few episodes already together. And we used to do this live thing on, I think it was YouTube. Didn't we go live on YouTube for a while when AI was was still a new thing? And we were like, hey guys, here's how you can use AI for pronunciation. Do you remember that? We started with Instagram and then YouTube as well, yeah. Yeah, so just to quickly go live like once a week to, to keep up on it. But then I think like all this AI stuff really snowballed, like we knew it would, but it's really snowballed. So I'm excited today to do this episode to say, to like touch base again and be like, hey, if you haven't Mm -hmm. been using it or if you've been using it, Here's something to think about, a way that you can be a little bit more effective, let's say, in your pronunciation in using AI. So I'm really excited to see you again, to have you come back and have people listen to your voice again. But for people who don't know you, can you introduce yourself and tell us the different possible ways we could say your name? Okay, so my name is Guillaume Palau, which in English is William Palas, little translation. I live in Spain, in a region that not only Spanish is spoken, but also Catalan, regional language. So I speak two languages natively, and then English has been my third language. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And now I think almost two years, I use English professionally at my job, which that was not true before. So that's a huge jump. Number one, Mm -hmm. you're using it live with humans, with people. With humans. humans. With AI (laughs) and with humans, yeah. (laughs) With AI too. But I mean, (laughs) with people, like you're, you're speaking spontaneously. And another thing is that you also have at least one YouTube channel. And what I also meant to say was like, you were using English, I think, but in a more rehearsed way, right? Like you would practice, you would edit a lot and things like that. And I think Hmm. recently you've been doing a lot of videos that are pretty much impromptu. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. That's a huge jump. So way Hmm. to go. (laughs) That is really awesome. In fact, we'll have a little confetti party to celebrate because I'm I'm super excited (laughs) for that. And also, I love just knowing you and people who are in any of our, our clubs or our community. They know you. They know that you're the person to ask about these questions, about these AI questions, because it's part of your job. It's a passion that you have. And you also mm-hmm. really love, how should we say, let's just use the term that we're going to use later, pleasurable learning, right? You're really into learning in a way that that makes you happy, that makes you fun, that makes you want to continue. So I wanted to say for anybody who doesn't already know William, yay, here's William. This is an introduction. He's come a long way. He is the point person for our Discord server, where if you join one of mm-hmm. our clubs, you're definitely going to meet him in person and probably be able to talk to him about these things a lot more. So I'm super excited to have you back on the show again. And I know your background a little bit. I know some of the terms, but we're going to say a few terms today that are maybe not so common for everybody. So let's just quickly go through what we're talking about today. We said 
we're going to use AI to, mm -hmm. to make my pronunciation and my accent training maybe more effective. So can you tell us a little bit about when you say AI, what does that mean? I know it's been a while. Some people really know, but I think a quick refresher would be good. What do we mean when we say AI? Why are we using ChatGPT as an example? And what's the difference maybe between ChatGPT and AI and anything else that we might want to talk about co-pilot or the word prompt? I want to give you the stage a little bit and have you talk about these things a little bit to clarify. Is that okay? Yeah, okay. absolutely. So AI stands for artificial intelligence that the recent last year and so on had a huge boom, increasing popularity. Mm -hmm. And that's because OpenAI, the company behind ChatGPT, they released, let's say, a chatbot that you can have a conversation. You can ask questions, like what you do in Google. But instead of just a search through a search engine, it's just for an AI that has been trained with a lot of data. And the most popular is ChatGPT, but it's not the only one. Yeah, I think sometimes you and I and everybody else, we use the, the name ChatGPT just as a, a shorthand for <clears throat> just AI in general, because I think oh, even yeah. the word AI is like, it's we still don't quite know what it encompasses. We don't know where the, the hmm. limits are. We don't know what the, the umbrella is. <laughs> that's a good observation. The technical term is lang language model or large mm -hmm. language model, LLM, the acronym. Mm -hmm. And ChatGPT is one of those. It's like you could say to have a color to say soda, but it's yeah. the name of a brand, but you're generalizing mm -hmm. to anything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're more or less doing the same because it's the one that was popularized to become viral. Like, yeah, yeah. And the noun that everybody uses, right? Originally, mm -hmm. it was a proper noun, and now it's being used kind of all the time to generalize it, like the word Kleenex. Right. Typical tissue. example. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think I think ChatGPT is going to become this thing too. And the other one we're going to talk about today is something called Copilot. Can you tell me the difference between Copilot and another LLM, for example, like Perplexity? Can you tell us what's the difference there? Yeah, is they are designed by different companies. Mm -hmm. So Copilot is from Microsoft, which at the end of the day is using ChatGPT. You know that Microsoft has a lot of investment in OpenAI, oh. the company behind it. Okay. So they use a different way to interact with ChatGPT. Mm -hmm. But the engine we could say it's the same. For instance, you have Perplexity or Google Gemini that uh -huh. are the language models like ChatGPT, mm -hmm. but they are from a different company. Ah, okay. Each large language model is its own yeah. company, but let me see if I've got this straight. But some companies, for example, Microsoft, then use those LLMs. For example, tell me if this is correct. Microsoft's Copilot is actually using ChatGPT. Did I get that right? Yes. And okay. for instance, one of the features that Microsoft offered with Google being images is that you could create your own images with AI. Okay. They were actually using Dal E. That is, we could say it's the same, but instead of words, it's for images. Mm -hmm. And this yeah, is from yeah. Microsoft. This is from uh -huh. Microsoft as well. Ah, yeah. I think things are becoming much more visual too. Mm. And that might be interesting for our purposes later. I think we need time, but to put in a symbol of for the correction, like maybe, I don't know, maybe this is getting ahead of it a little bit, but we're going to talk about how making our, using AI to make our training more effective for pronunciation and accent. But maybe I'm just having this thought now, maybe in the future when we can get it to correct us really well, maybe it's going to be able to do some things like what I can do already now. For example, we were talking about this earlier, how if you say the word D-O-N-E and you say don, I can actually put up a little symbol and say mm. it should be a uh, as an umbrella, right? Done. And so that's something that like I have a workaround for now, but maybe in the future, maybe these AIs will integrate it in such a way with some APIs and things where if you say don, maybe you're going to see this symbol pop up too later. Mm. Maybe there's going to be like an image way to get the images up there too. Do you see what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Yeah. For now, for instance, ChatGPT, if you use the phone app, mm -hmm. you can have a conversation. So you don't actually use the screen. You just have a conversation. The AI will transcribe what you have said to text. This text uh, is sent. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's processed and so on. Mm -hmm. But for now, they haven't trained the AI with the phonetics at the yes. extent mm -hmm. that is it allows this workflow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not super great yet. Not because it's impossible. It's because they haven't trained for such purpose. 
yeah exactly it's just not they just haven't done it yet and it's not like they can't it's just there's other things on their plate i totally get that the one thing i like though if anybody uses chat gpt on their phone with that i don't know what you call that the voice function what i really like i don't know if you've noticed this i really like the intonation of the speaker i guess we would call it have you noticed that mm-hmm. i'm like the intonation's really good have you yeah seen, i think there noticed? are five voices yeah. I, I always use the same one uh-huh. here i'm super biased so yeah. i haven't had exposure much exposure to the other voices mm-hmm. yeah it's super high quality one it sounds way. more natural like it's a human that it yeah. does the speed the pattern uh-huh. is not always uh-huh. the same yeah I'm, i was really blown away by that it does a better job than i do <laughs> that's something we've talked about i think in, in our club sometimes is oh maybe we can get our own synthetic voices made and for people who work in like youtube and things like that like maybe this is the future who knows get those voices oh, yeah to- that's not it's not a topic for today but just as yeah. a uh, sneak peek is that they can simulate your accent uh-huh. I have seen this in one website, and then you can fine tune this accent to overdo it or reduce mm. it. Mm. And I can guarantee, I'm pretty sure this will be awesome for accent practice. It's right. like a, a caricature that is uh-huh. mimicking you. Uh-huh. Caricature, caricature. Caric- yeah, here you go. One example. They amplify this error for mm-hmm. me as a learner. It's mm-hmm. more obvious. It's easier to get. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you'll be able to pick it up because mm-hmm. you you have a lot of training, at least with me. And yeah. it's been a while since somebody new has shown up. But when that new person comes along, right, you, we're suddenly back to the basics, right? And that person, you'll notice, they don't hear it at all. It's like, they're. let's say that we're going to talk later about voicing. And they don't even know that they are doing, let's say, an F sound f- instead of a V sound, they they can't even hear it. And so maybe this AI training to get your your ears to catch and pick up on those things is going to be a huge step because a lot yeah. of that you can do on your own. Here's the here's the golden nugget. The difference mm-hmm. with a search engine like Google that I can ask and have results with a language model that I mm-hmm. can ask and have uh, an interactive session mm-hmm. is I can get answers to something I haven't asked. Ah. And usually that's the best. So yeah. what I actually wanted, I didn't, didn't even know what I would have needed to ask mm. to, to get to this conclusion. But mm. now that it's presented to me, awesome. <laughs> Look at all uh, those other things. Yeah. it's Let's back up for a second. Because what you're yeah. saying is, I don't know what I don't know. And sometimes AI can say, hey, here's a thing that maybe you don't know that you'd like to know. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. So for instance, someone uh, brings to my attention to voicing. Then I ask the voicing with Google and I reach some conclusions and then some a few questions how to I can practice and so on. And yeah. But then yep. what happens mm-hmm. that the AI can bring to my attention what's called the awareness. Mm. That hey, you are you're not aware of such a feature in the English language that perhaps in your native language doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. So the mm-hmm. AI could cherry pick this to a super high position. Mm. and bring you to your awareness before you actually ask explicitly yes. about this. Yeah, exactly. I think it's just, I'm so excited about where all the possibilities lie. I think mm. what you said earlier about the fact that it's not that they can't do it. It's just that they haven't done it yet because there's just so many things to do. And we're just talking mm. about one little field of accent coaching. So I think we need to be patient, but I'm excited about all of these things. And one thing that you mentioned, I don't know what I don't know. And AI might have a guess about what I don't know. Let's rewind all the way before we start talking about more about things like voicing but let's talk about the word prompt because i feel like people throw Mm. it around they know what it means but let's just be really clear about when i say i'm giving ai a prompt can we just quickly review what that means yes so let to follow the comparison with a search engine that people are familiar with i can ask uh, about about the weather or how to do this with my phone or stuff like this. Mm-hmm. It's just a question. And based on this, Google will have keywords and will do the job for me. Mm-hmm. It happens behind the curtains. Mm-hmm. So with an AI, I want to in- interact with this AI. My conversation is with messages, like it was in a chat. Mm-hmm. So every time that I want to interact, I must, I want something from the AI, I will be sending a message. Mm-hmm. And this message is a prompt that, hey, based on this text, make a summary or mm-hmm. make a bullet points of the main ideas mm-hmm. or translate this into Spanish or whatever language. It could be anything. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. It's not limited to answering a question. I can, al can also be just transforming information or asking for information. Mm -hmm. Instead of search for me, based because they are trained, is what is blah, 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 or for brainstorming mm -hmm. and all yeah, of that. I think a lot of people have been using AI, but maybe weren't really taught in a way, oh, what do we mean when we say this? So I think it's a good idea to always yeah. kind of like step back and so, say, yeah, we've been using search engines for a while now. I think we don't even use the word query so much anymore. We just uh, say, was, Google this. Uh -huh. It was linked to there. That you, you will say Google this. You won't say, hey, do this search query. Even if yes. it's what you're doing, that's <laughs> hey, a technical... Google, query me this, no. <laughs> yeah, it's a technical word for it. And with prompt, we could mm -hmm. say it's a technical, the equivalent of the technical word, the prompt. Yeah. But for us, we could say just a chat or a message. Yeah, yeah. And I think what you said was, was interesting too, it, because I've done it, but I haven't thought about it. You can ask AI a question or you can just tell it to do something, right? You can't yep. tell a search engine to create a thing. And I think that's a really powerful difference here. So mm -hmm. uh, we said, okay, a prompt is a command that you give to AI, but that could also be a question too that it's answering as well. And could be a question. A you could also ask for questions. Mm -hmm. Hey, I have a text from Wikipedia. Ask me questions to verify I understood understood this text. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're commanding it to ask you questions. You can ask it questions yourself. You can just give it a command, an instruction. Mm -hmm. So I think it's yeah, it's a little, it's like adjacent. But I wanted to clarify mm -hmm. that and use the something main, that we call yeah. The main difference with Google or a search engine is that you ask a question, you get results, end of yeah. the story. There's no the conversation. Mm -hmm. And those results are then ranked by SEO as well. Mm -hmm. And and I, I think, and I think depending on the AI, depending on the, the LLM that you're using, the agent, then you, tell me if this is true. Are the results that AI is giving you ranked so far in any way? We could go into the more technical details. Mm -hmm. There's something called temperature. Uh, mm -hmm. Is how precise you want to be because um, Tem temperature. What's the temperature outside today? Yeah, exactly. Oh, the okay. same. So what a language model does is to predict what's the best next word. Ah. So okay. if I want more creativity, perhaps I want to choose a different word that is not always the the best candidate because mm -hmm. I want a different response every time I ask the same question. So I change this temperature okay. according. And with Copilot, you can uh, customize this. Ah, very interesting. Okay, so that's not just an overview <laughs> about large language models, right? The difference between ChatGPT and, for example, Copilot. That's a, a really nice, I think, review to get us ready to talk about, okay, how can AI then help me train myself and help myself better for my pronunciation, maybe my mm. accent, things like that. So we want to be more effective. We want to use AI for this. And we've got two main ideas here. We've got corrections and we've got the idea of like, how can we generate better practice? So first let's start mm. talking about corrections. And I think you wanted to specifically mention voicing and stressing, right? So tell us a little bit about how we can use AI to do our corrections for voicing and stress. Cause this is super interesting for me. Mm. I want to puntualize that it's not only more efficient, it, you can also use AI to make it more pleasurable. <laughs> because what? you can customize the examples to something you want, a particular topic or a TV show, Netflix show that you yes. want. Whatever this you works, like. it's a different story. Huh. It's not a drill. Instead of drilling from a um, textbook, yeah. let's yeah. say you have a, a TV show or a Netflix show you like. In your uh -huh. case, it will be Doctor Who. Yeah. So then I can say, hey, use, for instance, words that I'm struggling with the voicing. This one, I have a list of 10, let's say. Yeah. Then I can I, I can ask ChatGPT, make a short text of Doctor Who using the, those words. Mm -hmm. So for me, hey, those characters are from a series that I enjoy. It has some meaning. I'm not just drilling for the sake of drilling. Yes, yes. Like so oh, you have Jack these... and Jill went to get water, right? Something like that. It's something that's really customized to you, specific to you, yeah. that that makes you want to learn more, right? And that's, I think, the whole point there, too. Mm -hmm. we, I was laughing. I said, oh, how can we be more effective? But it's, and I was laughing, but it's a, it's not a small thing. It's a huge thing to create this, like, drive in and... us to, to want to do more. So I'm so glad you mentioned that. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, for and a side goal, it will be more effective. Because yeah. if it's pleasurable, it will be a lot easier to be engaged, to learn from your own mistakes, to keep going. 
-hmm. and so on. Even if you don't pay much effort to remember, just yeah. because it was more enjoyable, your brain will remember. It's likely mm -hmm. you will remember better be mm -hmm. because of the psychol psychological mm -hmm. effects and so on. Yeah, better and more. But that crazy. makes it al already more effective. Uh -huh, uh huh. Absolutely. So lots of and, benefits to using this. Go ahead. Sorry. And as mentioned before, for now, you cannot ask about phonetics because it doesn't do a, a good job most of mm -hmm. the time. But for instance, what you can do is you struggle with some words. So instead of repeating the same words or the same sentence over and over again, that you will memorize it, you will go autopilot, no pun intended, <laughs> with the autopilot. Co-pilot, autopilot, uh-huh. You want to avoid that. So you can ask ChatGPT to reuse the same words with different mm -hmm. stories or short sentences, but are not exactly the same. So you don't go at your mind, doesn't go autopilot. You keep mm. reading, even though the more or less there's the same pattern, the same words. It's a different thought process. Exactly. It's more meaningful. It's not, yeah. there's a word for this in English. Mm -hmm. to something, pra memorable? something practice, like oh. massive practice. Like the mm -hmm. athletes that train mm -hmm. always the same movement thousands mm -hmm. of times. So, Deliberate practice. Oh, yeah. I was thinking more like in traditional, like traditional old school education, school education. Yeah, that then, you do a lot of reps. Yeah, but... there's a word for that. It's R-O-T-E, to learn by rote. R-O-T-E. Oh, yeah. Rote okay, memory, by rote. Right. Okay, that's by the, that's by the more list. general. Yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. and, so yeah, first, so that's it will be mind. more efficient because yeah. you will get the same result with a lot less repetition, mm -hmm. a lot a lot less uh, time required and effort overall. Yeah, yeah. It's a win. You will mm -hmm. have a better time. You will spend less time overall and you will get more results. Yeah, and something else and that reminds... Yeah, go ahead. On top of that, using ChatGPT, there's a free tier. This, you can get this for free. <laughs> exactly. You can do all this for free. This is crazy. This is not your mama's pronunciation practice. I feel like things are really moving ahead. And, and... if you want ideas mm -hmm. how to use prompts, for your language learning, what you can yeah. also do for free is uh -huh. to change, for instance, every Wednesday, your office yeah. hours. Exactly. Exactly. Office hours. I wouldn't, not free, but almost only five bucks a month. You can come every week oh, on Wednesdays. Okay. Yeah. You can come, you can come. And actually today, the day that we're recording, this is Wednesday. So let's see what we can come up with today later on, because what well, you just mentioned was really interesting. This, how giving different answers every time, even with the same prompt, you can really generate a lot of practice that, like we said earlier, you don't know what you don't know. So for example, sometimes when we're in, in, in our club and somebody has trouble with a final sound, let's say it's an R, right? There's a final R. And then we dig in and we see, oh, it's not always that you have this problem. For example, you, sometimes we're going to talk about voicing in a second, a final V sound, right? Very often we say, oh, what's next? What's triggering that mistake? Is it a vowel? Is it a consonant that's next? Which one maybe? And I think when you say, oh, AI can generate a lot of practice, a lot of variety and practice here, that's something mm. where you can uncover patterns that you never even thought of, probably. Exactly. Yeah. The V yeah. sound followed by a vowel, by a consonant cluster, mm -hmm. a lot of possible combinations. So yeah. it, it will be in short sentences, in a paragraph. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It will spot what your what's the issue in your case. For ex yeah, exactly. For example, maybe maybe your final V in the word have, let's say, sounds mm. great. But that's because everything you've worked on is a, a V and then a vowel. Have, mm. haven, haven't, for example, right? And then you don't even know it, but you do have not. And suddenly, for some reason, your mouth can't do it and you can't figure out why, this would be a really good way to get all that variety in to make sure you, you've really transferred that skill to all the possible um, variations and combinations. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. yeah, exactly. So let's then talk a little bit more about voicing and your maybe personal experience. And when we say voicing, for anybody who doesn't know, we mean if you put your hand on your throat, you can feel when your vocal folds, or some people say vocal cords, when they're vibrating there. So whenever we say voicing, it's not like, it's not in general using my voice. It's not, what was the example you gave earlier? You said, oh, the verb voicing, it might sound like the verb to Google, right? And, and you were saying like, it sounds like I'm doing this thing. What was it again? Do you remember? Yeah, to audition for The Voice, the TV show. The, the show The Voice. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm auditioning for the show The Voice, so therefore I'm voicing. Oh yeah, mm. I could see how that's the verb you're choosing. But when we say voicing, at least in this context, we mean put your hand on your throat 
see if your vocal folds are vibrating. When the vocal folds are vibrating, we say it's a voiced sound. The example we gave a moment ago was the letter V as in very. If you say V and you put your hand on your throat, you should feel a vibration there. That means you're doing it right. right. But if you say F as in Friday, you shouldn't feel any vibration. And if you do, you say, oh wait, that's too close to a V for the person listening to me, right? So to quickly go over what we mean by voicing when we say that. Tell us, where do you feel like this problem, maybe this difficulty in English is coming from or is influenced by, for example? Yeah, in my case, it's because I speak uh, Spanish and Catalan natively, mm -hmm. and there's no sound, V. So we oh. have the the letter, yeah, but we make the same sound as the B. Ah, so we yeah. don't distinguish those. Uh -huh. So, so, so then, for you, it's actually two. Let me just pause you for a second to make sure yeah. for people who don't know Spanish. So we're talking about voicing in English. Does your V, as in very, sound like F, as in Friday? But if Spanish is one of your languages, your mm. V, as in very, could sound like B, as in Bianca or yeah, yeah, I was, right? yeah. Okay, yeah, That's just to case. slow down and, and clarify what what you mm. mean there. So you've got these two problems that are compounded, and just to make sure everybody knows too, B is in baby or Bianca. If you feel your throat, buh, 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 that is voiced. So the problem there is in the the articulation of the mouth. Oh. Whereas yeah, whereas if we're doing F, as in Friday. The articulation is perfect, right? I've got my bottom lip and I've got my top teeth and they're making friction, but I'm forgetting mm. to to vibrate those vocal folds mm. there. So just to clarify for everybody else, you've got two two issues in this case, in the case okay. of the letter V. So maybe can we rewind and can we not use V anymore? Can we use the S versus Z sound? Mm. Maybe that's going to be easier okay. for our listeners. Yeah, that will be easier, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in Spanish or in Catalan, what's the deal with S's and Z's then? Oh, globally, I would say that Catalan has more, a lot more voicing than Spanish. Hmm. So for me, that's no issue. But what happens with English is that I cannot tell this beforehand uh. because Roman languages have a lot of rules and sometimes exceptions, but you know the list of exceptions to the rules. <laughs> and English, it's just a pattern. Mm -hmm. So my, brains, my brain goes autopilot yeah. and then for whatever reason in english oh this is voiced and when it's an s and even here is an s in at the end mm -hmm. it's the same collocation mm -hmm. it's voiced so you have uh, both options mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and what happens is that my brain goes to the pattern that i'm used to but it's mm -hmm. in a different language and mm -hmm. that's the issue mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then since yeah. then since i'm not used even if i i then remember hey this word in particular is voiced and my brain tells, hey, do voicing. It's not enough. It's <laughs> it's there. The intention is there, but it doesn't come off enough that, oh, as a listener, I heard uh, voicing in this case. I still heard, yeah, I still heard yeah. the thing. Like your brain knows, okay, I should be voicing this thing. And your brain hmm. tells your nerves and your muscles, right? And then you're like, oh yeah, I'm vibrating those vocal folds, right? I got this. But it might not, you, you're checking the box, right? You're like, yes, vibrating yeah. the vocal folds, but it might not be enough for the listener to interpret it that way. So in, in exactly. your mind, you're, you have to sometimes think, oh, not only do I need to do it in my head, I need to overdo it to make sure I can check that box in a way. Uh, that's, exactly. Yeah. And sometimes like, I know when we're together, I'm like, maybe it's the person's microphone, right? Maybe they don't have a microphone or a headset or something. But in your case, I know you've got a good microphone. <laughs> so, yeah, so there, there's no that's not the here. problem. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And so, there's a yeah. different scenario mm -hmm. that, Perhaps I know the word or the collocation is frequent enough that mm -hmm. I correct myself yep. Yep. and I do the voicing. But what happens mm -hmm. that if I pay attention to something else, then the voicing is lost because mm -hmm. it's still not automated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it yeah. requires my constant attention. Yeah. yeah. Therefore, if my attention is not there, for the voicing it's very likely to be to disappear. Absolutely. Yeah. It's more of a cognitive load because it's not automated mm -hmm. yet. It's not in that. It's not automatic, like you said. And so you have to pay attention to it. But if you're paying attention to something else, you've only got so much attention to yeah. pay. So that totally makes sense. So how can AI help us get better voicing? Uh, one of the ways is to create suitable texts. Ah. Suitable mm -hmm. texts. Mm -hmm. For instance, the with the S in this case, yeah. I could have a short text with words with the S 
that sometimes it's voiced, sometimes it's not voiced. Mm -hmm. And even if I cannot know this with the AI, let's pretend it's not being trained and I don't get this with a good quality. Yeah. From other resources, I can get the list. Oh, mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. are exam example words when it's voiced. Like you have some lists like this. Yes. And some other words that are not. Then it's a ChatGPT. Use words with those from those two lists. Yeah. I make I don't know three, mm -hmm. a short text. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then I don't even know what will be the ratio of voice and unvoiced. Mm. It's up to the site with the AI. Yeah. And if I don't like it, I can just generate another one, and I can customize it, whatever, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then practice. Saying the, to read these out loud, mm -hmm. and then the pro level, next level, <laughs> is to record myself while I, I'm pronouncing those while you're sentences. Reading it. Oh, yeah, that's a great idea. And so to back up a little bit, I think I'm hearing two things. Correct me if I'm hmm. wrong. Number one, <clears throat> for example, let me rewind back in time. Before AI, I painstakingly made lists, like I think you're mentioning. I made mm. lists and I said, okay, here's examples of when it's voiced and when it's not voiced. And here's the top 100 verbs, for example. Like I made these lists and then along comes AI and just throws it off the cliff. And <laughs> AI is like, I can do that in two seconds. So I already have lists that I can give people, mm. but they can, so what they can do is they can go to AI and they can say, hey, AI, I already have a list of words or sounds that I need. AI, can you please take my list that I already have and generate some texts for me, hmm. right? So you can tell AI, take that same list and do it again, AI, and AI will come up with a different text. Is that correct? That's yes. number one. Okay. And, and is that called non-generative? What's that called when it makes it gives a different answer to the same question every time or the uh, same prompt? Non-deterministic. Non-deterministic. Okay, thanks. Hmm. So what that means is, yes, I can tell AI the same prompt, and it's going to give me different answers each time. Mm -hmm. And so that's really cool. That already like ups your game. And then mm -hmm. you said, maybe there's a pro level here, but there's another thing I want to pull out for people. Number one, here, AI, I already have a list for you. Number two, I don't have a list. I don't know what I don't know. Mm -hmm. AI, you do all the things for me. So I'm going to write maybe a more detailed prompt to say, hey, AI, I need some practice in voicing. Can you pick for me some high frequency verbs, uh, a variety of high frequency verbs where I can practice voicing and voiced and unvoiced final S's? Would it be something like that where you're telling it everything? Yes, but it will not have the same quality because mm -hmm. it has not been trained with phonetics. Okay. And perhaps it will be good. The choice will be good, yeah. will be correct, mm -hmm. but will be uh, some verbs that are not commonly used. Mm. But yeah, they are in the dictionaries, but how, how likely I'm going to say this sentence in real life? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's good, yeah. which is not necessarily bad because you want this for practice. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I can say, check in the uh, description box. I, I can give that list out for free. The 100 top verbs, plus hmm. I have some easy ways to say, hey, AI, here are the ones that should be voiced and here are the ones that shouldn't be voiced. Because like you said, I can give it more information, but the results might still not be quite as good hmm. as if and, I already pre-picked those things. That's what you're saying? And here's one golden nugget that I haven't mentioned explicitly. Okay. That you should avoid a standalone words, like a list, mm -hmm. the potato, and you practice the, those words because oh. the spoken language doesn't work like this. You don't say mm -hmm. a concatenation of words. You say mm -hmm. sentences. What happens with sentences is that I can have of the voicing at the end, like the S, for uh, example, we said, but yeah, but what follows? Because if I have a vowel or a cl consonant cluster, yeah. perhaps the voicing will be different. Mm -hmm. or longer or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you have more exposure to the real scenario when yeah, you speak absolutely. the language. Yeah, when you have phrases and things. Yeah, for quick example for people to follow along better. So if we're talking about a final S, right? That happens mm -hmm. when things are plural. That happens when you've got mm -hmm. the third person singular. He, possessive. she does a verb, yeah, or possessive. So I'm thinking about voicing in these. So let's say, for example, let's use the word, the plural of something. Mm -hmm. Let's say... For example, I've got my front and I've got my back, right? And if I have plural, I'm going to say backs with an S like a snake. But if I have bag, g, b a g, like I mm -hmm. carry a, a purse, bag. I carry a backpack, mm -hmm. I carry a bag, g, 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 then I need to voice that bags, bags. in the plural, right? Mm -hmm. So what we're saying here, 
pause for a second. <clears throat> Sorry, let me get some water. <clears throat> Edward! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what we're saying is when you have a, an S that is voiced, like in bags, mm -hmm. I want to pay attention to what's next. That's natural speech. Do, am I saying bags on the table with an O? Bags on mm -hmm. the table? Really easy to see if you voiced it or hear if you voiced it. What if I say bags through the door? I know it's a silly sentence. I wouldn't say it, but I might have that combination because THs begin a lot of words. Or bags mm. that. That Z sound, that voicing of the Z kind of might be buried in, in that consonant cluster. So getting AI to generate a variety of actual phrases and not a list of words you're saying is going to be way more effective just from the beginning, correct? Awesome, awesome. And ChatGPT as an artificial intelligence, it's a language model. It does a good job so that the sentences feel real, like a human will say that. It's not mm -hmm. something that feels synthetic from a 20-year-old mm -hmm. textbook. Jack and Jill get the water, right? It's Yeah, it's so ridiculous. <laughs> and some of those old, those old examples, they're very skewed towards, I don't know, male agents and things like that in the sentence. So they feel, they don't feel really good to say anymore. And so now it's nice to have a, a good representation of more natural language. And so I think that's a really good way to get started. Voicing is a huge topic. AI can already up your game a lot already. What about stress? And when you say stress, do you mean syllable stress or are you thinking about word stress and rhythm or perhaps both? Yeah. I don't mean when you have trouble sleeping with a lot of uh, <laughs> workload. That is stress. Yeah. Or you're yes. stressed out about your pronunciation. Yeah. The syllable stress. Uh -huh. Okay. Syllable stress. Because my native languages are Roman languages. Mm. Comes from Latin. And English also has borrowed from uh, Latin. So mm. when they share the roots... Sometimes the the pattern is the same, the even the spelling is almost the same, but uh, stress in a, is in a different uh, place, a different syllable. That's why it's, oh, I, yeah. I, I, I was not aware of this. Sometimes, oh, tell me if this is true with my learning of Spanish, at least in Mexican Spanish, as far as I know, if I were to guess, most of the time, if there's a stress syllable, or sometimes they say what the syllaba tónica, I think. Mm -hmm. It's usually the penultimate, the next to last syllable. The second, the second last, yeah. The most second of the to time. last syllable, the penultimate syllable. So you you have that; it's ingrained in your brain, right? It's it's from years of of just not even thinking about it anymore. Hmm. That might interfere in English. I don't, and and tell me if this is true. Is it the case in both Catalan and Spanish that it's usually the penultimate syllable, or is yeah. there already some mix between them? In Catalan, there's some changes because there's a tendency to. I uh, drop the last vowel at the end. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you have one syllable syllable less because of uh, the vowel that is not there. Okay. But most of the time, they, uh, they are in the same place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But for instance, one of the common words is interesting. Mm -hmm. But it's a very beginning. That uh, For me, it's real, real challenging that, to do the stress at the very beginning. Because Spanish is interesante. Ah, interesting. And interesting, if you see the spell, it's, yeah, they are really look like a, a, a super close. I can see they are cognates. They are related because of mm -hmm. the root they share. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. for whatever reason, the spell, I, the stress is at the very beginning. Yes. For whatever reason in English, yeah. Hmm. Try to find the reasons. <laughs> Good luck with that. You'll go mad. And what that. happens that if I say this is interesting, mm -hmm. an interesting topic, you can, you're going to still understand me. It will sound weird, yeah. but your brain does the job. And since there's no other word that sounds the same, but in a different pattern, combination, mm -hmm. but I'm doing yeah. this mistake. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. what have happened that I learned English and I have repeated this mistake thousands, tens of thousands of, of times. So now <laughs> it's fossil, fossilized. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And why? Because probably everyone around you in Spain was making that same mistake and there was no reason to correction, correct it. Sorry. No, there was no, no reason need to correct correction. It. Yeah. And then when I, the few times I was speaking uh, English with um, native speakers, mm -hmm. they will still understand me, even with totally the, mis mm -hmm. the stress in a different. So, not a problem in this case, right? interesting, interesting, no comprehension hmm. issues, right? We notice probably, um, but we can figure it out. Most people, no problem. 
And, but like, here's two things that reminds me of. Number one, your stress could be on the wrong syllable and that might make a change in grammar or it might make a totally different word. That that could be a problem in comprehension. And then number two, we haven't even talked about what we have in English, which is secondary stress too. Yep. This word interesting, it doesn't have secondary stress, but just imagine now if you have to sometimes go halfway with that. So yeah, this example is bad enough, but imagine that there's already more there. So I didn't even know that maybe AI could help me with my syllable stress. What tips can you give us about how to maybe get some pr pr pronunciation practice with syllable stress through AI? I, yeah, exactly. In my case, since I know the source, most mm -hmm. of the time is because of the Latin root. Mm -hmm. Then mm -hmm. I can ask to generate a text using uh, words from Latin. Ah. Or since, since I have a list, uh -huh. I can ask for this list, make sentences and so on. That's my case. But let's say that your native language is another one and the yeah. pattern is different, but it's consistent. Yeah. yeah. As long as it's consistent, then you can reproduce this and generate more practice and more practice. Yeah. Once you know, once mm -hmm. the key is to identify yeah. where, where it is. And, see, and let's say it's the first time you do it. You didn't, don't even know what pattern you follow, the, your mistakes are. You can generate a text for this uh, purpose. So mm. you can generate a text that are in different collocations. Then you do it. You read this out loud. Mm -hmm. And then you could identify, hey, did, you know what? I have, I'm, I'm making this up, this error. I do this mistake when there's a word with at least three syllables. And the last syllable is a monosyllabic. There's only mm -hmm. one syllable. And it starts with T or a liquid sound or whatever combination that may be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can use AI to identify this. Mm -hmm. Once you identify this issue, the combination or combinations, if there's yeah. multiple, then you focus on those. So you mm -hmm. target what you need more practice on. So yeah. instead of rehearsing a list that is always the same list that you find <laughs> online or a, a course or a textbook, whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You only focus on where you need practice. Yeah, yeah. And you use more time more efficiently. Totally. And that makes me think too, like when we take a course online and it's like mm -hmm. a video course and you're going through the videos and like a list, it gets boring sometimes. So I think to make things more pleasurable, it's really nice. One of the things that's really nice about doing things in person is, oh, you have all this spontaneous stuff that happens and it almost feels AI is giving that to us too. It's, oh, you can only get that by using AI. So I think something that you reminded me of is during a, in a club, in a course, in a class where you've got this kind of like live personal element here, maybe mm -hmm. it's partly my responsibility too, to be teaching people, hey, here's a list of, I don't know, a hundred verbs that are the most important verbs in English, let's say. And I want to take a minute and teach you how to use AI so that you can get more out of it, right? Mm. Because I think, like you said, it's our default is to be like, oh, here's a list. Oh, here's a video. But doing that can just really up up the game so yeah. much more. So it Here reminds me key. that I need to teach people too. Here the key is to make the experience your own. Mm, also, yeah. to inspire people, I think. Yeah. For so instance, in uh -huh. go ahead. One example, we can watch a YouTube video or to go through the same lecture mm -hmm. or article. So everyone will have the same experience. Are the yeah. same words in the same play in the same combination and so on. Mm -hmm. But what happens if we use AI that based on a starting point, we have a common starting point. Yeah. We customize our learning experience based on our difficulties, previous knowledge, what mm -hmm. I know is different of what you know, or what I like is different of what you like. So with AI, you can make the experience your own. So what they exactly do will be different of what another person will do, even if we have the same starting list and the same mm -hmm. goal yeah, to yeah. learn how to properly do voicing in American English. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, to and that's totally what, I, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. And that's what you don't get in a course. Let's mm -hmm. call it old fashioned course that yeah. is static mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and mutable. You cannot change yeah. it. Even if they remake the videos every two years or whatever, it's still, here's a video. Like you said, everybody's watching it. They're hmm. probably only getting so much out of it. Uh, and that's like on average, right? But if yeah. that, it reminds me of like, teach a person, give a fish, teach a person to fish kind of thing. And that makes me re remind myself that, oh yeah, I 
I need to do this deliberately. I need to teach people how to do this. So they say, oh yes, I feel empowered. I know how to do it. And then when I do it on my own, like that just really sparks some kind of pleasure, not only being able to accomplish to having this competency of, oh, I, I do know how to use AI. Cause everyone, I think not everyone, a lot of people are like, oh yeah, there's AI. Of course that, that's something I can use, but people like you, people besides you and I, do they really whip out their phone and do this for like their own pronunciation practice? It's a bit of extra work, but once you get into that habit, woo, you're going to go so fast. I think it's like the difference between old school flashcards and like space repetition set flashcards. Mm. You know what I mean? And on top of that, it doesn't have to be, so it could be the, the case mm -hmm. that is your goal. You're explicitly, mm -hmm. you're targeting practice in this case, mm -hmm. voicing, mm -hmm. but it could be that I have just a conversation with my speech. Yeah. Uh, and then I find out that how it's been transcribed, let's yeah. say instead of back, it's back. Oh, yes. Hey, so I, perhaps I was asking about something about a question about physics that I wanted to understand. Mm -hmm. But I said back instead of back. Yeah. The voicing was lacking. So it's, hey, that is an indirect feedback that I was lacking the stress here because the AI that has been trained mm -hmm. hasn't recognized this as voiced. It thought mm -hmm. it was in the threshold of, hey, this is voice bus. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if I notice this, even if my goal was whatever else, or what's the actress, what's the name of the actress of this movie? And hey, I said movie, or instead <laughs> of movie, so it was not voiced. Mm -hmm. And so this is, hey, not that I noticed, I take note. Yeah. And then uh, that's, it's, it was not even my purpose. Mm -hmm. And it even goes beyond the micro learning. Yeah. It's, Smaller than that. It's mm -hmm. just 10 seconds that, hey, I, I wasn't ready for this. I wasn't <laughs> actually requesting this, but now that this shows, yeah, I, I will take it. Yeah, it just adds to everything else. Like you said, it's not micro learning. It's not 10 minute chunk. It's maximum 10 seconds chunk, mm. not even probably. But yeah, to get that random reinforcement every now and again, that would be really helpful. For example, you and I, like when we're doing a podcast episode, I'm not correcting you as much, mm. but when we have clubs and classes, then obviously that's my job. That's why I'm there. I'm trying to catch every little thing that we can. But for example, right now, anything I do catch, I know that you're paying attention to it because number one, like you, you've trained yourself to really, anytime I interrupt you, anytime I repeat something, you catch right onto it. And then you, I know you, you'll say, for example, what if you said fashion with an F, for example, forget mm -hmm. about the syllable stress, just the voicing motivation. And I just repeated the word and I said, motivation, you would already know, oh, there's probably something wrong with my voicing. Hold on a second. Let me redo that again. And you go through all of that, right? Because you've already trained yourself. Some people though, they say, blah, 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 motivation. And I say, I jump in and I say motivation. Some people just don't even hear it and they just keep going. So I think there's something to be said, like about training yourself in this. I'm not saying, we're not saying it's, it's an easy process, but it's mm -hmm. really going to give you a lot more returns when you do this too. And a lot of it's yeah. the awareness. I'm learning how to speak a natural language. Mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. a, so it will become because humans can speak this language. It just happened that you are, you acquired language through a different system, a different language. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But it's not something that is not achievable. Mm -hmm. Oh, it totally, just, yeah. It just goes with time. And mm -hmm. I think one of the golden nuggets I learned with year across the years is when it's not your goal. Mm -hmm. So when I improved more and I actually did more practice is when practicing English was not my goal. <laughs> when you're doing something else, you're watching a movie, you're like, yeah. yeah, scrolling through videos or something like that. Yeah, exactly. But I think that's because you had already raised your awareness enough to yeah, be aware exactly. of that in addition to the other thing that you were doing. Hmm. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. So we've got voicing, we've got stress. Now, and I think all of those are important. One last thing about stress. Remember the word I just said, motive, motivation, right? There's secondary stress. It starts out with halfway secondary stress, motive, motivation. And then I've got my primary stress there. Do you think, to close out this part of the discussion, do you think it's possible or likely in the future, <clears throat> excuse me, is it possible or likely in the future where we can, maybe we need an API to do this, where we connect, let's say dictionary.com to that. And then we can also see secondary stress, for example. Hmm. It could be like this, that you're integrating a third party, mm -hmm. a third tool. 
or another language model can be trained with this data from the dictionary. Uh, I don't know the exact terms, the lexicon, yeah. lex, uh, uh -huh. something but like the, that. Yeah, the lexicon, I think. And the, what we're saying is the list of words in the dictionary or the data that's in the dictionary, I think that would be yeah. part of the lexicon, yeah. Yeah, how, how it is written, how it sounds, and considering the different regions so and different dialects that it's not universal. There's usually more than one option that is valid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, there's that too. Yeah, mm -hmm. there are some companies, startups that are going in this direction. Oh. That th they are using AI with learning language, usually uh -huh. English, among yeah. other ones. But yeah, it's a matter of time. With some years, I will worry about keeping your job. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be retired by then, I think. <laughs> ah, yeah, the, the, the worries. Yeah, it, it <laughs> well, will be more. I'll or less, be investing uh... in these companies by then. We'll say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, it, it will but... be just enough time for you to be. Uh huh. Exactly. I'm just gonna ride the wave to the end of the shore, and that's it. And I think, I think ask... what you mentioned was important. Like you said, oh, in other languages too, and that made me think. I know the AI works in lots and lots of languages, but. I, and I know that a lot of this stuff is in English, right? So probably the hmm. training, probably there's a bias to English, towards English in these trainings. But I'm hoping for my own sake, for example, for French, for Spanish, right, for Arabic, I'm, I am hoping that we'll be able to do all these same things at the same level in other hmm. languages too. Just to mention that Chachi has been trained in 70-something languages. Mm. I don't know how many, but a lot, including Spanish and Catalan, that are the ones that oh, I wow. speak, yeah. mm -hmm. which Catalan only has like a few million speakers. It's wow. not that common language. Mm -hmm. And other LLMs, other language models, only have English. Uh, I know, I'm not sure, but I think when you use the phone app, yeah. it only works in English for now. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, that's I think. I, I'm not, no, I'm not sure. And this also changes super quickly. Mm -hmm. It also depends on the language. For instance, mm -hmm. Spanish is a lot easier to pronounce. Ah, uh, yeah, that's very but interesting. But the only, I think, limitation is the availability of the content. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if you have a, a lot of text, books, web pages in uh, any language, yeah. you can train it like mm -hmm. ChatGPT did. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. if you have indigenous languages that there's not much recordings yeah. or text, it will be harder mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, in this aspect. Yeah, yeah which, may, which kind of puts a fire under us to go to those languages before they become endangered or extinct even mm -hmm. and get as much at least verbal and then also transcribed into written in a way that we can keep it alive as much as possible and use that as a tool for getting more speakers of the languages too. Because I think that would yeah. be, so, yeah. That would because be your efforts are in American English, mm -hmm. but uh, visually all of the prompts we shared can work in any, any language mm -hmm. that is supported by the yeah. language model. By the model right now. And right now mm -hmm. you're saying the, the biggest one is ChatGPT for those. Yeah, it's a mask. Okay. There's a, the other are, are going behind ChatGPT, but it will mm -hmm. be the it's the next war. Yeah. It won't yeah. be who has the best search engine. Mm -hmm. If it's uh, Microsoft, Bing, Google, and uh, now it's who has the best model. Yeah, right. exactly. Because those search engines are going to be in using those models, like we've already seen, or like yeah. you said, the Copilot, which is not a search engine, but I think it's part of the operating system, right? Like you have, I can't say it right now because I I use a Mac, but S I R I yeah. when you invoke that that thing you can also then invoke copilot right because it's part of the oh yeah oh, you you want to avoid to see the name so it yeah will trigger? yeah because the things okay. are going to pop up on my screen right now yeah <laughs> if i see it it will be triggered as well maybe i don't know try it siri nope we're good okay just so siri is like siri instead of text to speech mm -hmm. it is with mm -hmm. a chat and you can chat yeah. via text and later you could chat i'm assuming just like siri yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because it's part. It's not. It's not just a long language model, an LLM anymore. It's now part. It's just, just going to be so integrated into our daily lives pretty soon. I think that's going to be so. The the, thing. the conclusion is that now we are in the start of two thousand and twenty four. Mm -hmm. Now we have to be precise. Saying the year is not enough because the AI evolves super <laughs> quick. Yes, and it can only go better. It can only improve from here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so, we can say that we're recording on February 7th, 2024 for the yeah, archives for, for, for the time the capsule. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what happens. So, so let's come back. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. That learning a language or improving the speaking skills, that the accent, it will only get easier. Mm, exactly. As long as you know how to use it, how to use this power. It's a tool, right? It's a tool that, that if we're thinking about physical tools for, let's say, for construction, right? I have a hand 
a drill, let's say, an old school auger. I have a hmm. screwdriver. I have an electric drill. I have one with a battery. I have a, what we call a hammering drill, right? Where all these different bits. To me, this is the same. It's just a tool and a series of tools that the better I can use them, the more kind of projects I can do for myself and how I can speak. Yeah. So that's the analogy I'm thinking yeah. about. It's the same analogy, but the tools are more abstract. The, mm -hmm. the power mm -hmm. you have is more abstract instead yeah. of concrete tools that you can touch. Uh -huh. Which for some people like me, it makes it harder to wrap my head around because I can't pick up the tool of AI. <laughs> I can't press a button. I can press a button on AI, but it's not the same as like a physical tactile pressing of a button. <clears throat> Sorry, the physical tactile pressing of a button. So let's take that idea of it being a tool and let's come around to the idea of how I can use AI to, let's say in this case, as a tool to, let's say, make a project. How can we generate texts and better texts, more effective texts? to practice my pronunciation, my accent, and things like that. So I think a lot of people have been using AI already to create a text, maybe from a list or something like that. And we mentioned already one way. One way is to use the same exact prompt again, prompts again, and to get a different result, right? To have that, I think it's non-deterministic, we said. So that's one yep. thing I'm already, I already can do. But what else? What else other than prompting? Yeah. What, no, other no, prompts? what else other than prompting? What else other than knowing that I can use the same prompt to generate different results. What else can I do with AI? Can you have, do you have any other thoughts? Yes, but that are good enough for, mm -hmm. because you know what happens that every time is a different answer, but uh -huh. not always this answer will be true. Uh -huh. It yeah. could be yeah. a nonsensical answer. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. have this degree that in case of language learning, you don't want to learn nonsense. So here you will have zero tolerance. Yeah, so but there's a difference. Well, let me pause you for a second. There's a difference between, we can say, uh, truth and fact, which we probably don't care that much about if I'm just doing language practice. If I say the capital of New York City is Zimbabwe, it makes no sense truthfully oh, okay. and logically. I, I got right? you. Yeah. Yeah. In that I, I, case, I, we're not so worried about it. But maybe more what you're talking about in terms of a nonsense sentence. For example, I might think of it as a word salad. Instead of saying the capital of blank is blank. Are you saying that you might get a result that's something like this, where capital the of blank is state New York? Does something like no, that ever happen? Not in this case, that doesn't make okay. sense grammatically. They are better than us already with grammar. Okay. So I say more in the sense that I can ask for, I don't know, words that are voiced, mm -hmm. and the words that came up are not voiced. It, ah, they are it's, voiceless. it's making mistakes, you mean, yeah. Uh, exactly. So it's not I that see. doesn't make sense how it's con the sentence is constructed. But mm -hmm. the choice is wrong. There we go. Okay. So it's incorrect, basically. According mm. to what you're asking, maybe it doesn't know enough. It's not necessarily lying to you, but it's it it doesn't know enough to know what fits those parameters and what doesn't. Exactly. Is that more so accurate? If you're in, okay. actually, if you're in a level, mm -hmm. you're proficient enough that you only want to practice this the accent, yeah. but you're already aware of the voicing, this mm -hmm. should be voiced, and you will catch those errors. You but if yourself. you're in a position... Yeah. Exactly. If you're in a position that you really don't know mm -hmm. and you want to learn from the, from the AI, is when you want to maximize, minimize the tolerance. Mm -hmm. You want the chances of error to be minimized. That what you see is factually correct uh -huh. and it's, let's say, grammatically correct, phonetically uh -huh. correct. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah, yeah, if, yeah. if it's a lie, that like yeah. the capital of the US is New York, let's mm -hmm. say, mm -hmm. at this degree, I don't care because I'm just for the language learning, not the yeah. facts. And the vocabulary. And I'm yeah. trying to get my pronunciation of the word New York correct. That's why right? so that's fine. my suggestion today is mm -hmm. to use AI, but not rely on it 100%. Totally. I still have other sources for the rules or the yeah. exceptions yeah. or patterns, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. word lists. And yeah, from yeah. this, you generate the content you want. Yeah. You feed it more. So the chances of it making a mistake are lower because it doesn't have, it's, it's coloring inside the box, inside the lines, right? It doesn't, doesn't have the freedom to just choose anything. It's using the parameters that you give it. So for example, yeah. like you said, if I'm good enough and I see that it said it's bags and backs and it mixes those up, if I'm good enough and I can see that, okay, I caught the mistake, right? The problem is when I don't know what I don't know, or I don't know enough, then that's going to essentially create a fossilized error possibly right mm -hmm. in the future because yeah, exactly. i'm not i'm i'm just going to think it's correct so the point i think you're making is for everybody don't trust it completely yet and give it as much information so you can control the output as much as possible yeah. there's um, we can simplify 
-hmm. is that I can ask for information or I can ask for transforming the information I provide. So mm -hmm. there's no new information from the AI training data. Mm -hmm. If I provide the information, just transform it. Okay, for example. So in this case, I have the words. I have mm -hmm. 10 words. Make a sentence. Or I have this text. Mm -hmm. Is rephrase the text so it has a greater flow when I speak it because perhaps it's from Wikipedia mm -hmm. that is written in a way, in a style that is not meant to be yeah. out loud. Yeah. But the key words are already present in the text. Mm -hmm. The AI is not choosing those words. I see. So mm -hmm. it's just transforming. For instance, if you want a more clear example, if you have a, a book, you will do a highlight. Of what you think the keywords, so mm -hmm. you're transforming the information. The, the you're whole not text. Add, you're not mm -hmm. adding definitions or yeah on top of the the paper. You're, yeah, and you're, that's the you're, key. You're saying use because this. when you when the more you ask for information that is not present, the more likely is that it will be misleading. Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't mean nonsensical. Let's say. And you might not know that. Yeah, you might not know that enough and to say, like, oh, wait, this doesn't work. I know a golden nugget that I found, found mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. that even if you have some mistakes that you have bags instead of bags, yeah. that, oh, this is voice, not voice, and it's still in the list, identifying those mistakes is actually part of the learning process. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. When you are like, hey, wait a minute. That's one of the best things to me is like when people yeah. come and they say, hey, I, I could be wrong, but I thought this, is this right? And I'll say, no, I think you heard that exactly right. And hmm. here's what I think is going on. So to me, that that threshold is really interesting. Knowing, uh, starting going from knowing, knowing that you don't know what you don't know <laughs> to saying, hey, wait, there's some things that I don't know. And I think that these are some things I should be questioning. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So as long as you have novelty on those mistakes, it's still a learning process. It's still useful. Mm -hmm. When you already know that and it becomes spam, that, yeah, I'm not learning anything from that, then yeah. it's when you have this issue. But uh -huh, uh -huh. when not, you still get something from those mistakes. Absolutely, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. We could say spam for the brain or we can say food for the brain to nourish it along. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So <clears throat> in general, sorry, in general, we've got some ideas here about how to use short text to make our pronunciation and practice better. You have a couple of examples. For example, there's a, a list of words that starts with P. This actually came up the other day in one of our in one of our club classes. Yep. Can you tell us how this was how we used how you used this at the moment during the club class, somebody had a list that they wanted to work on. They already said, I have these words and I'm gonna I'm gonna read those words in a minute. But first walk us through what you did at the time you said, oh, this guy, he's got a list of words. I'm going to help him out. I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to generate something. H how did that work for you? Okay. So what I did, I visit the website of OpenAI for ChatGPT. Mm -hmm. It's chat.openai.com. Yep. I already have an account and so on. So what I did is I sent a prompt. Uh -huh. I said, make a short text with the words, Colin, and the words that person uh, made. That is protest, protestant, another one. One more, that, yeah. There were one more. Yeah, I'll say, uh, I'll say them in a minute. So there were these four words that we had there, right? And then you said, "Oh, this guy's got a list of words." What, what happens in this case uh -huh. is that those are those are words that are almost spelled the same, that are very yeah. similar, mm -hmm. but may be pronounced in a different way. Okay. Or perhaps just a stress, same pronunciation, different stress. Yeah. So instead of just reading those words out of context. As we mentioned before, is no, I want a genuine sentence in context that makes sense to use those words instead of words in isolation that won't transfer in real life. Mm -hmm. so instead mm -hmm. of just me making up one sentence, I can ask ChatGPT to make one for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me say the words now. And then yeah. maybe if you can remember the prompt that you used, more or less, that would be really helpful. So the words yeah. were, and it depended on, we were talking about, let me back up. So he brought this list of words and he said, okay, I just need to practice these words. And sometimes we say, oh, what's going on here? Is it the vowel? Is it the syllables? Is it the number of syllables? Is it the, where the syllable stress is? Is it maybe some consonant clusters, something like that? Like we said, is it connected speech with what comes next? And in this case, there were these four words. They all looked the same, but for example, it depended on if it was a noun or a verb, right? Was it the person? Was it something else? So let me say those four words, right? Number one, we've got a, 
protest, syllable stress on the first one, a protest. I'm going to go to a protest on Saturday. Why am I going to go on Saturday? Verb to protest. Now the stress is on the second syllable to protest. I'm going to protest, I don't know, the new laws that are being, that are being published. Now I'm a person. I go to the protest so I can protest. What am I? I'm the noun of the person. It's going to end in O-R or E-R and I'm going to be a protester or is it protester? I believe we looked that up and we thought we saw, oh wait, one is more British than the other. Hmm. So we, we, we discovered that on our own. And then the last word was a word that derivates from that because in, in the past, there were some people that were, that were pro protesting. There were some protesters about a religion and that then became another religion, that group of people, and we call them Protestants. So it comes from the same root. And these were the four words that were on the list, a protest, to protest, a protester, and a Protestant. So there were there was this mix of things. Do you remember what prompt you gave GPT to come up with a little? Uh, yeah? Exactly what they said. It, the natural language. Make a short text with those words, colon, and yeah. the words, a protest, uh -huh to protest, a protester, and Protestant. Uh -huh. So you said, do a thing here with these words, colon, and then you copy and pasted those four words, correct? Yep, exactly. Okay. As easy oh, as cool. that. Uh -huh. That that worked out really well for you. Some people think they, they need to be really, I don't know, tricky with their prompts or more specific, but this worked out for you. Let's see what it, and you did this in, in seconds, right? While I was just, we were just going through and checking these words, because for example, hmm. that third word, I was questioning myself. I was like, where is this stress? Because I've definitely heard both. And then we saw in the dictionary that, oh, this one's just more British. Ah, oh, that's why I've heard it. But actually I myself say the other one. So we've got a whole paragraph here. Let's have you, if you can, read that out loud. Read what he, I say he, GPT wrote. She, GPT. Let's see what it. GPT wrote. Yeah, theoretically in English, it will be it, the pronoun. It's, that's true, theoretically, yeah. yeah. So that's the short sentence, uh, the short text. During a demonstration, a protester decided to protest against the government's policies. While nearby, a protestant minister offered support to the cause. But this is a difficult one already because it's not a long text and all those words are smashed in together, right? Mm. So I'm going to I'm going to do what I would do if we were in that club class and I would say normally that's not true. Normally I'd have the app open, right, and I would be making some marks and, and visually showing mm. you what the problem is. But since we don't have that option right now, I'm going to I'm going to say go through it again and I'm going to stop you when there's a mistake because I heard there were four words and I heard two mistakes. One was the British American thing. And the nice. other one was you just continued that and you kept going with it. So read that again. I'm going to stop you in this time. Okay. During a demonstration, a protester. A protester. It, noun. Protester. protester. Mm -hmm. Okay. A pro, here, here's the stress. Exactly. A protester uh -huh. decided to, pro, to protest. Perfect. Against the government's policies while nearby a uh, pro Protestant. First syllable. Protestant. Protestant. Uh, Protestant. Oh, you're doing that thing. Oh, let's pause for a second and talk about this. <laughs> Remember, <laughs> we were talking oh, about Catalan, oh, one of your languages. You haven't done this in a while. Syllable stress is three things. I need to go longer in duration. It needs to take more time. I need to go louder in my volume. And I need to go high, higher in my pitch. And you just did that thing where you used to do, and you're doing two out of three, but you're going lower in pitch, right? Yeah. A Protestant Protestant. Minister. Yeah, Protestant there minister. we go. Uh -huh. Offered support to the cause. Exactly. Now, all of those sounded perfect. Also, the thing you mentioned earlier, when you're focused on one thing, which is all these P words, that third word came out a little bit wrong. I'm going to ask you to say it again, this time focusing on it. During the what? During? Uh-huh. Where's the during in the sentence? During the, it starts. During the something. Oh my God, the very start. Okay. Uh -huh. during, the, <laughs> during the demonstration, 
Uh, perfect this pro- time. Yeah. Protest. Perfect this time because we're like, and it was perfect the first time too. But the second time, when you were really thinking about correcting those p words, I think you said demonstration or so, something like that. We'd have to watch the the replay. But demon, just, like like the the devil, the demon. Exactly. Yeah, something like that. So so to illustrate a point that you brought up earlier, I thought, oh, that's perfect. Let's talk about that really quickly because that was. No, a, a great I, I made example. those mistakes explicitly because. Oh, thank you, thank you for that. I'm so glad <laughs> you're here to demonstrate all the mistakes for everybody. Thanks so much. So that's one example of how we can use AI to take a list, write a simple prompt and get an, I don't want to say easy, get in a, maybe, how do I want to say this? I'm not saying it's easy. It's, it's challenging, but it's not necessarily complex. What I mean is it's a simple sentence. It's just one sentence. It's simple, but it's not easy is what I want to say. So this is the, this is the challenge that I think you can, you can give yourself here. So super simple. Now, that was class, I think, yesterday. And now you you have another example that you gave. Is is this other example, this is one that you came up with yourself for the purposes of our podcast today? Or was it just something no, you no, happened to be doing? That's a genuine example I used in the past that I came across randomly with one article, one yeah. research paper. But the article was mentioning one research article about the longest syllables in English language. Mm. And it happens to be seven seven letters. Not yeah. necessarily when we say long, we mean number of letters, right? We mean number of letters when we say long. We don't mean, like we just mentioned, the syllable should be longer here, right? We don't, yeah, we don't yeah, mean yeah, that. Yeah, the, yeah. The amount, yeah. Which the doesn't correspond necessarily the amount of sounds in English. Yes, exactly. Mm. So what they did is from this list, l- let me put this list in chat GPT, yeah. and hey, generate a text. Even though my goal is not to have long syllables like mm-hmm. prompts. Yeah. The word we learned today is prompt. You make yeah. the plural, it's mm-hmm. even longer. So yeah. prompts is one single <laughs> syllable, but there are a lot of letters there. Ah. This happened to be in the list actually that you were doing. Yeah, the plural. Yeah, happened to be the there. Plural. So what they did is A, I want to practice clusters, consonant clusters. Mm-hmm. And what I notice in the list that there's a pattern that when there's a long syllable, there are a lot of clusters. Yeah. Make, make, make sense. It's, mm-hmm. hey, it's a good choice, a simple thing that I can generate a text that yeah. is easier to understand, that the mm-hmm. grammar is simple and so on, but contains words and are meaningful, that in That's... their meaning, the meaning of that word makes sense in the context yeah. and are quite tricky because there are a lot of consonant clusters. Instead of saying something, reading out loud a Wikipedia page, I will have a, something more targeted to my intention, that is yeah. to practice consonant clusters yeah way more meaningful way more and memorable also memorable. And, and... Not, and and you had this list already so not to say mm. that it was necessarily a high frequency list of words i'm going to use every day but in this case the challenge was oh i want to practice words that are actually quite difficult to say even if i'm not going to use them very often that that practice is me doing some we could call it tongue training in this mm. way yeah and mm. something we haven't mentioned explicitly is that with prompts, I can specify further how I want. Mm-hmm. And in this case, is A, the words I'm, um, from this list that I want, yeah, which use them in the text, but with capital letters. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's a lot easy. And when I read this, I'm aware, A, that's a target word. Is that, mm-hmm. So I'm making this awareness because sometimes I don't want to. It's, I have a text, but I'm not sure which, with example before, yeah. which words were meant to be voiced. Mm-hmm. I don't want the spoiler because mm-hmm. the practice is to identify if this is voiced or not. Yeah, in this yeah. case, I don't want that. It's, mm-hmm. I already know which words in particular I want to that are challenging. Yeah. I just want them in context. So for capital letters, for me, it's a way that I'm aware this is one of the target words. It's not context for the sake yeah. of the story. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you can customize what... it as yeah. much as you want. Yeah, and, and be really not not just customize it to you personally, but also be super super specific about the mm-hmm. the thing that you're practicing. Like you said, oh, I'm looking at your text now, and there's a lot of words that end in s or ed or sed, 
for example. Mm. And that's because of the clusters, because simply adding an S or an ED is already going to make my word longer and give it a lot of variety, right? So I'm saying to myself, okay, I'm not working on the voicing right now. I'm not working on the EDS ending. I'm just really trying to get through this word because they're a little bit difficult. So I'm going to say there's three words in this next little passage that you have mm -hmm. capitalized. So I'm yep. going to say those words first, and then I'd like you to read that out loud as well to see what GPT came up with. So the first one is the past of a word that means to look at really quickly or see really quickly. And in case nobody knows this word, it's called to glimpse. So the past would be glimpsed in the past. Like you just said the second one, which is prompt. We've been saying that a lot today, but now it's plural. So it's tss, prompts. And the next one kind of ends in that same ending. The verb is to, for example, if you think of a, a sculpture or to sculpt the verb, he sculpts. Here's that final S, but it's for the third person singular, he, she, or it. So we've got glimpsed, prompts, and sculpts. <laughs> really difficult words <laughs> for your mouth to say. <laughs> this is a challenge. Again, like I know what your focus is on. So if we're making other mistakes right now, we don't care about those. We're looking at those three words. Let's have you read this text a little bit that GPT created. Okay. Can you have the text on the screen? Uh, cool. yep, there we go. Tom, a young man with a keen eye. Once glimpsed a mysterious nice. old book with the local library. The book, filled with enigmatic prompts, ignited Tom's curiosity. He was an inspiring writer, oh. often struggling to sculpt his thoughts into words. That night, under the dim light on his desk lamp, Tom sculpts a mm -hmm. story inspired by the book, his fingers dancing over the key keyboard. The story was longer. Just for the yeah. second example, that's enough. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. But I wanted to say two th two things, right? So the last word, I think, was the best one, right? We have a t -st at the end. All of those were really clear. They were all there, right? Let's go back to the second word in the middle, prompts. And I think you added a little extra t at the end, like you weren't sure. <laughs> right. So that was a little bit long. Just, yeah, just go through that one again, cutting it off a little shorter. And glimpsed was really good in the consonant clusters. Here's a problem that I have with that. Your G at the beginning wasn't voiced. So it sounded like a K. It sounded like glimpsed, right? So try to get, okay. and if you look at that word, the word before it is once, and that E is silent. So really, I'm going from an N and an S. Once. To the G, once g, once g, once glimpsed. So all together, I've actually got a lot more consonant clusters than I bargained for. You, you have, know what I mean? I, I said an example of everything we said so far. Exactly. <laughs> depends on what you have next or before. Yeah. It will make it more challenging. Yeah. yeah. And future. usually it's the other way around. It's the thing that's next. But here, the thing that we want was actually influenced by the end of the previous thing, hmm. which is what, which is not something we normally see. But yeah, we're giving all these examples and we didn't even plan all this. So these are really good ones. So let's go through it again. And nice and slow. And really, again, just those three words are the things that we care about most, right? So let's let's try it again. Tom, a young man with a keen eye, once glimpsed Very nice. a mysterious old book in the local library. The book, filled with any prompts, uh -huh. ignited like Tom's balloon, curiosity. You know? He was an inspiring writer, often struggling to sculpt his thoughts into words. That night, under the dim light of his desk lamp, Tom sculpts mm -hmm. a story inspired by his by the book, his fingers dancing over the keyword. There. And, and the story continues. And then it, could, it, it would continue, right? There we go. Yeah. So look what happened here. You had capitalized the word sculpts, sculpts. Mm -hmm. Very nice. But I don't know if it was you or GPT. They, it wasn't capitalized about a line above it where it said sculpts his thoughts yeah you know what uh -huh. because it doesn't have the yes so therefore it's not the longest it's not considered the long version of the yeah. word right so i thought it was funny that it was oh it's the same thing but without the s right so yeah just something and to note. this could be also that's a good example mm -hmm. that we could say is almost the same practice mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it's the singular or plural yeah but in one i'm primed that's a target word and yeah. the other case i'm not primed Exactly. So if yeah. I record myself, then I could see, hey, if I have the intention, is there a difference? My brain does something when mm -hmm. I'm not paying attention because mm -hmm. I'm not being primed to this target word. 
Yeah. Ah, yes, exactly. And then that would be a really good case for remembering to record yourself too, so that later you can say, hey, did that happen or not? I think, I'm not sure. I didn't notice it before. I don't remember marking it. I wasn't prepared for that. So I think that's that's another thing we can add to the list too, whether or not you're primed to notice something. In this case, we weren't too. So, all right. So we've got two really good examples. One was, one was a list of words, putting it into a text. Another one was taking a list of words that might be difficult for a different reason, in this case, consonant clusters and long syllables when we write them. Now we've got another one that we mentioned earlier, and this happened the other day too. We had a secondary stress, which we can think of as being half stressed, and it was on the last syllable so here's the long word. The last syllable is we can maybe say half stressed. And then why is that difficult? Because I'm probably only going to notice it when I move on to the next word. So that combines this thing we talked about earlier, where it really depends on the context of the thing that I'm doing. We, we happened to find a whole bunch of these the other day in a text that you had brought. So let's see, how could or how did you take some of those words and, and get some new practice out of it? Okay, so this is a slightly different case. Mm -hmm. Because instead of just a list and I create a story or yeah. a text, I had a text to begin with. Yeah. Then going through the text, I did some mistakes of the secondary stress. Mm -hmm. So I identified the words. Oh my God. Z, z, words z, that, that had secondary stress. It's mm -hmm. okay. In my case, were initiate, phenomenon, and characterized. Yeah. Mm -hmm. don't, they, don't take my pronunciation as correct. <laughs> right now, yeah. <laughs> Um, Still got to practice. Yeah. So what I did, it is okay. I want to, to practice those words, but in different context. Mm -hmm. in, in this case, it was from Wikipedia, a Wikipedia article. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what I want is something unrelated. Yeah. Unrelated, but those contain that unrelated text that yeah. contains the same words, because I know for sure that those words have this kind of weird collocation of yeah. a secondary stress at the mm -hmm. very last syllable. Uh -huh. And the so, reason you knew that was, it's not like you said, oh, I have a list of words in the beginning anyways. I'm going to bring a text mm -hmm. to class. And you weren't thinking that these words were even going to be a problem. And we discovered them at the time. So yeah. this is an instance to where be, you're like, oh, I want further practice about- To be honest, even what happened that I was working, I only had three minutes on the clock <laughs> before joining the session is, you, you know what? I was reading this Wikipedia article, copy, paste, done. And turn, turn out to be a good practice with this pattern of secondary stress. Totally. And it's one another example. It was not too cool, but mm -hmm. now that this is presented to me, I will just embrace it and mm -hmm. do this practice. And then identify that I have a bad time with this. I, I really need practice. Therefore, I just did some other texts mm -hmm. with the same words so I can practice because I don't want to read over and over the same yeah. text because exactly. I will memorize it and mm -hmm. go at the mm -hmm. pilot. The mm -hmm. practice will be rote. Yeah, exactly. Therefore, not effective. Not as effective, yeah. And yeah. that's, I think, another point in favor of getting away from these video recorded classes and things like that, because we make those discoveries usually live as it happens, and we just can't plan them. We can't predict them. And sometimes those are the most uh, memorable things that we take away. And then you say, oh my God, this is a thing. I'm going to go work on this thing. If I may, yeah. If I may, I will do what if a dice session. Mm -hmm. It's a session, not a yeah. class. Exa yeah, thank you. Yeah, sometimes I say we had class because it's, it's again, it's that word that everybody associates with. But it's our, our time together. I want to make sure everybody knows it's not a class. I don't say, okay, guys, today we're going to all study secondary stress, right? Not everybody has that issue or is ready for that. So what we do is I tell people, come with a text, even if you just got it three minutes ago, and come with a text, <laughs> something that's interesting to you. And then let's see what we find from here because it's more... It's akin to more natural things. It's you're already interested in it. It's in a way it's a bit more spontaneous because it's not like you're preparing for an interview or uh, a presentation that you're going to make. It's, it is a text, but it's a way that we can discover these things. And we already have goals that you're working on. Like you, you would come, I think it was yesterday. You said, oh, I am working on voicing. I am working on clusters, which yeah. you're doing. And then bam, we discover, oh, secondary stress. Maybe that's something we should pay attention to. And look, all of these have secondary stress on the last syllable, and that's affecting your connected speech. So hmm. just to say that, yeah, we discover these things, and what a great way to then use AI to further practice these new discoveries. You know what I mean? All right, so let's see. Which were the words? I'm going to read the words out loud and uh, see if people can hear 
where the primary and the secondary stress is, and then we'll have you read that passage. Is that okay? Yep. Okay, so the first word is da-da. Initiate. Initiate. Da-da. You can hear da Da. That last ending is like half stressed, right? So we've got initiate. The next initiate. word on the list that we previously discovered randomly was the same pattern, in fact. Da. One, two, three, four. Four ends up a little bit higher. Phenomenon. 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 Remember, make your pitch go higher. Phenomenon. Phenomenon. There Phenomenon. We go. Phenomenon. 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 And then I, the I'm last trying. one is a little bit longer. It's da. characterized. Characterized. So I'm starting high here. Da, 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 da. Characterized. 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 And that last cluster has the Z E D written, but it's Z D Z D. Characterized. 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 So we had these three words. You discovered them and you thought, oh, I, I need some more practice with this secondary stress thing, even if these are not words that I simply use every day, it's a good mm. skill that I want to practice. So we've got the we've got the little sentence here and we're going to break it up into two pieces so that it, let's see if it's big enough. Okay, perfect. So let's read that out loud. We're thinking about these three words and they're not capitalized this time so they're hiding mm. a little bit more. Init initiating an new endeavor mm. often oh, says again. initiating in initiate. Oh my god. Da 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 da. Da, da 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 initiating initiating Inish, nish, inish. Inish. There initiating we go. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. initiating and... a, a new endeavor often sets in motion a fascinating phenomenon there we go one characterized uh, by the characterized. rate of... characterized 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 often go. characterized mm -hmm. by an array of unpredictable twists and turns. There we go. So this was like not an easy sentence anyways. Hmm. And did you notice that the original word on our list was initiate, initiate. And here you had an ing ending, which hmm. in our case didn't affect the stress, but now that last syllable is something new. It's an ing. So it's initiating, aiding, initiating. Huh? initiating. And I think that threw you off, threw you for a little loop there. You know what I mean? So hmm. let's do that one again. And everything else was really good. To, to say that this is difficult is an understatement, especially like we said before, <laughs> the influence you have from Catalan, from Spanish, right? It makes it a different pattern. Usually your brain is, oh no, it's always the second to last syllable. But here hmm. it's probably the last syllable, but only halfway done. So there's some complications here that, that make it extra difficult. So for the gold star, let's read this one again. Initiating a new endeavor often sets in motion a fascinating phenomenon. Excellent. One correct characterized. There we go. By an array of unpredictable twists and turns. Ah, that was off awesome. And if we were on Discord, I'd be playing like a sound emoji of clapping or something yeah. like that. Because because that was like fantastic. Thank you. Ex excellent, excellent. <laughs> so there we go. And sometimes we say, oh, by the way, I know you were focused on something else. Here's just for everybody, array, second syllable, array. Yeah, array. not a common word, but since we're here, yeah, exactly. If you're in programming, it will be common. In in programming or programming? Oh, oh, oh my God. <laughs> I, I should stop speaking right now. <laughs> <laughs> you love it. You love it when we find new stuff. So programming, in programming. Programming. This, this is the case. Absolutely. Okay. Excellent. Okay, so we've got two more things that we wanted to quickly talk about in terms of GPT and how I can use this to create more things. Whew. And then we're going to say goodbye for today because that's a lot for people to practice, I think. One is tell us about motivation. This is interesting. And why you chose this text. The other day you came with a text about motivation. I can't remember if it came from Wikipedia or where it yeah, came Wikipedia. from a study. It was Wikipedia. Okay. And like we said, Wikipedia is not really written in a way that sounds very natural when you speak it out loud, but yeah, exactly. this gives us a chance to find a lot of other things too. So what was the issue with this text about motivation? Do you remember? Well, yeah, it was not an issue. It's because I used this article as an example in one YouTube video for my mm -hmm. channel. Uh, and then since I had three minutes to choose a text, is <laughs> hey, I, I have one tap open in this computer, uh -huh, copy paste. Uh -huh. And because <laughs> it's also something I care. Yeah. Because motivation, it's something you know what it is, but it will be hard to express how you will uh, define what it is. 
It's hard to define. Yeah, it's that thing yeah. you're like, I know what it is, even if I can't describe it very well. Okay, mm. so it was a thing that was already interesting to you. You had a page open, quick copy paste. You thought, I'm going to use this in our session and let's just see how I do with this thing because it's a cold read in a way, but not completely. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Because I use it to do a how-to video, a guide, how to split a Wikipedia article in a certain software. Mm -hmm. So it, it, the content was not relevant. Only the mm. sections that you have headers, subheaders. Mm -hmm. But it piqued my curiosity. Uh, true, yeah. true. And it happened to be a good choice for yeah. secondary stress that I was unaware of. Yeah, we didn't even know this. This And then because this word is repeated several times, motivation, mm. motive, motive, motivation. Here we're starting with that secondary stress. Motive, motive. You can probably hear me go down. Motivation, right? Yeah. Versus, we found this too, motivation is the noun the verb is to motivate right motivate. We, we found that oh god that's the opposite actually did i come did i say okay guys we're all going to learn the word motivation versus motivate no you and you bringing this it also sparks other people's interest when we have a session so this is also why i like to tell people hey bring something that's interesting to you and let's see what it brings up right you have have your goals in mind but let's see what else we can squeeze out of this i so, think one of the one of the uh -huh. overall golden nuggets here, as a, to wrap up more or less everything we said, yeah, is that I haven't did any, all of that because of practice. Is hey, I want a text to practice for the sake mm -hmm. of improving my accent. It's not mm -hmm. something I already did. I yeah. work on, or it was there. I mm -hmm. used this article, mm -hmm. or I used one of my YouTube videos. I do, and we s see some of the clips. Yeah, yeah. The, po the point is that. You just do whatever you do in your daily life and mm -hmm. take this super tiny portion, could be seconds, as a language experience, mm -hmm. an, mm -hmm. an opportunity to learn from mm -hmm. your mistakes. Mm -hmm. It's not something, a, a new task that you will have to perform every day, that it will be tedious, yeah. uh, and so on. It's, no, whatever you do in your life, yeah, that, yeah. that's work, work the best. In long it should term. be applied all the time, all the time, yeah. all the time that you're that you have the space for and the opportunity, like you said, right? Yeah, yeah it should it be only like takes okay, a few now seconds. I'm gonna do English, uh huh? Yeah, yeah. It should be a switch that goes off and on when you're doing other things. It should be just this additional thing. Mm. You hope, right? You, you want to get to that point, and you don't want to be like, okay, now I'm gonna do English. Let me sit down. Let me prepare my mm. space. Uh, exactly. and yeah, that's that's that does not actually make the the best learning experience. I think. So we're talking about now. Maybe not necessarily AI because this you didn't generate by AI, right? You found it in Wikipedia. Yep. Mm -hmm. Assuming it was a human, because yeah. now I don't know if Wikipedia will be also written by, by AI. <laughs> I had not even thought of that. That's scary, actually. Yeah, we go to Wikipedia and it's going to start being rewritten by AI. Yikes! That's a that's a little bit of a scary mm. thought. So here we were talking about motivation, motivate that secondary stress, and then we mm. found this other word in there too, which it says it contrasts with, and this was weird because I wouldn't use this word again. It took the word a, which means not, or mm. some kind of a contrast, a, a lack of, right? Lack of motivation. So it was saying like a motivation, but that really tripped us up because it's not a word we would normally use, a motivation, mm. meaning a lack of motivation. And then later, or maybe earlier in the text, it said the motivation. So I think our brain was like, was is that an article? A space motivation? That doesn't make sense because a motivation, it sh shouldn't be like, there, there's this countable, uncountable thing that I'm thinking about. And, but like you said, it's a Wikipedia article. So we've got this thing about motivation. We've got something about behavior. And that was another text, goal-directed behavior that you had brought to our session and I know the second one, both of them, we would put into my special app and we mark it up so that you can see, oh, behavior, there's a y in there, for example. Mm -hmm. And we can mark the syllable stress and secondary syllable stress. And so it seems to be that these last two are a little bit less about AI. Is that right? Yep. Okay. Okay. So let's read through those and just have a little bit of practice. Then I want to ask what you're working on right now, what, how people can find you, maybe your YouTube channel and stuff like that. But let's pretend that this is a regular session and I'll do some more correction for you. Then we'll maybe talk about all the golden nuggets that we found <laughs> and say goodbye for today. How's that sound to you? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Because it's taking longer than I expected. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. okay. We can always, yeah, we can always cut stuff out of here too, but some people like the long version. So we've got text number one, which is about motivation. 
and hearing that, let's listen to that and just see if we can find any mistakes because this is not the first time you've read it. It's not a cold read, but let's see how it's going along for you. You ready? Okay. I'm okay. ready. All right. Motivation is an internal state that propels individuals to engage in goal-directed behavior. It is often understood as a force that explains why people are an or animals initiate, continue, or terminate a certain behavior at a particular time. It is often understood as a force to explain why people, well, it's repeated. Uh, it is a complex phenomenon. There we go. And its practice definition is disputed. Sorry, its precise definition is disputed. Very nice. It contrasts with a motivation, mm. which is the state of apathy or or listlessness, nice. words that you will never use in real life. Exactly. Motivation is studied in the fields like psychology, motivational, motivation science, and philosophy. Yeah, I think at the end you were expecting a different word, but it was the same. Motivation, motivation. Yeah, I was expecting motivational. Yeah, the, you were the thinking adjective. about the adjective. Ah, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah you're, again, the stress is different based on the word form, right? Or the grammatical mm. aspect so of the this word. this is the source, you have phenomenon, the keywords we had before from the other text, uh, characterized and initiate yeah. yes. comes from this context. As you can see, it's in a, in a different way how you practice the same words so uh, instead of repeating the same text over and over again. That was on purpose then. Okay, that makes sense because yeah. I was thinking, how is this text related to the AI generation of, of text, texts we can test ourselves it's, with? Uh, that's the key. It's not related. It's uh -huh. just using three key words. Yes. That I want to practice, but it's yes. unrelated. The topic is unrelated. Exactly. It's just more practice using another context that that might be just as natural. Exactly. Okay, so let's read that one more time then. And I want to correct any of our regular words that we're doing on purpose to practice, but also anything else. For example, that y in behavior, right? I know that I, I know did. that, that y is I always did. my brain tried to do that. It's uh -huh. ah, see, there's another example. In my brain, I was doing the y. Did it come out? Not for me. Not strongly enough, anyway. Not... Your behavior. Behavior. Individ... Okay. <clears throat> Here you go. Mm -hmm. Motivational. Motivation is an internal state that propels individuals to engage in goal-directed behavior. Nice. It is often understood as a force that explains why people or animals initiate. No, no. Second. Nish, nish. Initiate. Initiate. Initiate continue or terminate a certain behavior at a particular time. Nice yes. Uh -huh. It is complex phenomenon and it its practice definition is disputed. See mistake as before. Its yes. precise definition is disputed. Ah uh, that's why it contrasts with a motivation, which is a state of apathy or listlessness. Hmm. Motivation is a state in fields like psychology Motivational, motivation science mm -hmm. and philosophy. There we so go. Something I now realized as a user is uh -huh. that when I pay, paid attention to the, those three words and not yeah. the rest, mm -hmm. I repeated the same mistake in the non target words. Yes, like, exactly. Mm -hmm. I know what I said instead of uh, precise. Yeah, maybe it was a Z sound there. I, yeah. I totally and, know. And, uh -huh, uh -huh. Motivational. Instead of motivation yeah. science, yeah. I said motivational science. Yeah, makes sense for me too, right? Same like, mistakes. Yeah, the whole thing. And to me, I as, as a person who's like helping other people, I have a real challenge in deciding what do I pick out and hmm. when and say, oh, here's another mistake, right? Here's another, because I don't want to be a motivational, right? I don't want to, I don't want to discourage somebody because, oh, there's just too many other mistakes because that's sometimes not the point at all. Sometimes the point is get these three words right because these are the ones you're working on. And then we can go back, you know, if you have a little more energy and let's say what falls apart when you're not paying attention to those things, right? Yeah, for, it for will example, be actually, these, yeah. It will be actually counterproductive because you will be paying attention to so many things mm -hmm. and you will not master and none of yeah, of those. exactly. Exactly. And so that's why in our sessions together, we always read things twice, right? We sometimes even three times, right? To say, hey, here's a thing that's not wasn't the target, but now let's read it again and see what else we can find too. So yeah. for for example, here, I ever I've always been impressed that you had the word listlessness correct. Because that's a hard <laughs> one. And you might you're see not it expecting you that, to, right? 
Yeah. And you got that one eye and I might think you're going to say least or like least, like most and least. And every time it's been bang on, it's been correct every time. So I'm, sometimes I'm trying to pick out something that I think you're going to make a mistake on because it's maybe a different pattern. And then I say, oh my gosh, like that he used to say least all the time, not even close anymore. Like when was the last time we found a short eye problem? Not anytime lately. So that's like, excellent. It has been automated. Finally, it's been automated. <laughs> it takes time. Of course it takes time. But now, my, now you can check that box and you can say, even when I'm focused on other stuff, I'm not making that mistake anymore. And that's something we can pay attention to too. So using AI, let's say to summarize this last part, I can use it. I can have a list of words and I can say, make a short thing with this, make a short text for this. So I can practice those words from scratch. I can say, hey, here's a list of words that I want to use for another purpose. For example, the consonant clusters, or here's another skill that I want to build, which in this case was secondary stress. And then I can say, hey, just take these words that I still want to work on. And I want to do them even again in something else, right? In another thing. So there's three or four ways that we can use AI here too, I think too. So We have a lot already that we've talked about today. This is going to give people a lot, I think, to practice on. Even if it's been a while and your AI keeps growing, but you forget about it and you don't use it enough, I want to say, let's get back to using this, thinking about the simple prompts that you can do. You can work on voicing, you can work on stress, you can work on those skills. And how can I generate short text to make my pronunciation practice more efficient, as you said, and more more pleasurable? So before we say goodbye, tell us more about (laughs) pleasurable learning. Okay, so more or less the premise is that what happens in the school system is that you have some uh, curriculum to follow. Yeah. So eventually you will learn, you will have to learn something that you don't care. Mm-hmm. And you will notice that it doesn't stick the same. It, it is mm-hmm. not the same experience, right? Mm-hmm. And then <clears throat> what could happen as an, as an adult when you want to learn a language, let, let's say it's English, that perhaps you don't know better and you will just repeat what you have done at the school system mm-hmm. because you haven't acquired those skills and so on. Yeah, And yeah. happens to be that it's one of the least, here you go, the word, <laughs> least effective nice. methods you can, you could do, mm-hmm. you could follow to learn a language or learning in, in general. Mm-hmm. And one of the key factors, if you, are, if you could choose only one factor, yeah. is curiosity, the pleasurability. If yeah. pleasure, all learning should be pleasurable. Mm-hmm. And as long as you you have fun, not only just fun, but makes sense for you, there's a purpose of this learning. Mm-hmm. It's not just because I'm forced to do this from 6 to 10 to, uh, mm-hmm. to say something. Mm-hmm. You'll be engaged and it's a never-ending experience. Mm-hmm. Then I, I have a YouTube channel called, you can guess the name, <laughs> Pleasurable Learning. Learning. The R, the, R, <laughs> the R sometimes is not there enough. Yeah, yeah. That... I, I started with some YouTube channel, some software called Super mm-hmm. Memo mm-hmm. that is for free learning, what you do. If there's a curriculum, you do what you want and so on. Mm-hmm. So the key is to, to maximize the ability, pleasurability, the learning process. And now, since I have done hundreds of videos, mm-hmm. because I wanted to, because it was pleasurable for me mm-hmm. to do the videos, and mm-hmm. I do, and I then I reuse these videos as a learning because I record myself. So that was the a loop itself. Yeah. And then I'm going, since I have done almost everything I covered already with the few yeah. hundred videos, mm-hmm. I'm widening the scope of the channel and with this in mind to help mm-hmm. people discover first, hey, there's another workflow, learning mm-hmm. flow, mm-hmm. and the tools that you can use for that. Totally. It's not hard what you have to learn. It's more about what you have to unlearn. All of the mm. bad habits from a school. <gasps> that, oh, I will just repeat this over and over again, and I will memorize it or st- stuff like this. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. What, that's what I, I focus on. Ah, huh, that makes a lot of sense because hmm. sc- schools. When I went to school, they they thought their job was part of their job was to like teach you how to learn, but hmm. that was how you're supposed to perform in school, and that doesn't necessarily mean that's how you learn best. And so I think undoing a lot of those things that are holding us back or maybe even giving us a bit of trauma in learning mm-hmm. things is so important too. So pleasure, That's pleasurable what, learning, yeah, is, is really important. That's why now I think it's the start of a new era with the AI mm-hmm. because it will be much more informal. You don't need even a teacher. 
Mm-hmm. So just mm-hmm. with what you like, it could be yeah. uh, watching a sports, watching Netflix. And with the help of AI, you can bridge the gap of what you don't know. Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's so important. So you said, basically, I'm going to be out of a job soon enough, but your job is <laughs> going to skyrocket now because you're going to teach people mm. how to do this. So now, now it's more about how to get the skills mm-hmm. in order to, for me, it's already a meta skill mm-hmm. because the, this skill is to get any other skill. Yeah, exactly. To, to yeah, learn yeah. about whatever you want, to learn how, a lot. To learn, exactly. Uh, I may it, not know the yeah. answer, but I know where to find it. And that's the most important thing. Totally. And I'm having fun while I do it. Yeah. Perhaps you don't even know the answer or how to get it. Because perhaps there's no answer, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but you know how to get those skills to brainstorm, to the thought process, to have ideas iteratively, and mm-hmm. that's entire the entire cognition uh, field. Yeah. So it could be yeah. anything, any field of mm-hmm. work, hobby, yeah, anything. Whatever you do, whatever you're passionate about, whatever mm-hmm. you want to learn more about, and you're just having an interest in, absolutely. So we're gonna we're gonna link in the show notes. We're gonna link to your website. We're gonna link to your LinkedIn <laughs> as well, and then people can get in touch with you that way. Yeah, f- and feel free if they to... really want to meet you. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, feel free to contact me if you want. Mm-hmm. If you're interested in some workflows, I could also do some videos about more in depth examples how I do it. Yeah, exactly. So one one of it is knowing how to do it. And another one is procedurally, oh, here's how I create this workflow for myself, right? So, yeah, so you so, need to create an account here. These yeah, details having, are more the hard skills rather than soft. Yeah, those things that, again, we don't know that we don't know. And once you, some, sometimes that stops you from doing something new. And I know that's the case for me. And so it's really awesome for me to know you personally, really personally, because I see you well, so many times a week. And I know that I can always come to you and you're open to questions and things like that. And you, sh- you show us how to do something pretty easily. And in fact, what today is Wednesday and mm-hmm. we have our office hours today. So I'll probably see you in about an hour, actually. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's an hour. Yeah. Yeah. And we have our office hours once a week. We have our we have our feedback club also once mm-hmm. a week. And you're not a teacher of English and you're not trying to become an accent coach, but I have a whole nother oh group that meets on Thursdays that are teachers of English usually who want to become accent coaches like me. So I have three clubs that I do all week and I'm I'm constantly using technology. I know I'm asking you questions all the time and you're super, super helpful. And I love having you come on the show as well, because I think one of our words of the day was nuggets. We've got many golden nuggets and we can share lots of stories about how we're using, at least today, how we're using AI to make our our lives easier in Mm. terms of what we're learning. Maybe it's not pronunciation and accent. Maybe it's something else completely. Like you said, I don't know, basketball or learning how to bake bread or something like that. Absolutely. Thanks as always for coming on the show today. I'm super excited always to talk to you. We have so much fun and this is being pre-recorded, but really mm-hmm. consider joining one of the clubs so that you can come and see us live. It's, it's almost like watching a comedy show, I feel sometimes. And as, as always, my pleasure. Ah, exactly. <laughs> <From ching. laughs> like yeah. We'll end on that note. See you. See ya. Bye for now. See you soon. And thanks again, William, for always being there, for always supporting us and our whole community and always being willing to come on the show today and share your knowledge about AI, about language experience, and about all the other things that we love talking to you about today. Thanks again. And you, thanks again to you for listening too. I hope you got a lot of information out of today and you found it really valuable. Thanks again. See you soon. Bye for now. If you found this episode helpful in any way, please subscribe and leave a review. It's actually really helpful to me. Now, before I go, I have two tasks for you to do. First, I want you to register and come to my free monthly masterclass. They're on the last Thursday of the month. In just one hour, you're gonna master a specific American accent skill. For example, the TH sound or rhythm. The Zoom registration link actually changes each month. So the second and maybe more important thing I wanna ask you to do is to sign up for my mailing list because you're gonna get the registration link each month and you're gonna get bonus materials before and after the masterclass that I only send to my email list subscribers. The email opt-in link is down in the show notes. Be sure to sign up for my mailing list and come to the monthly masterclass for free. I'm Bianca, your personal American accent coach, and I want you to know that your voice is your choice. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the show. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now.